Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're going to be talking about titratable acid handling in the nephron. So with that, let's give it a go. So the first main region that we're going to look at today for titratable acid handling is the proximal tubule. So inside the proximal tubule on the basolateral membrane, we have the sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump pumps out three sodiums and it pumps in two potassiums. And it does this by using the energy released by ATP hydrolysis. Now on the apical membrane, we have the sodium hydrogen exchanger. This exchanger uses the electrochemical gradient established by the sodium potassium pump to basically pump hydrogen ions up against their gradient. So in other words, the sodium hydrogen exchanger moves sodium into the cell down its electrochemical gradient, which releases energy. This energy is then used by the sodium hydrogen exchanger to bring hydronium ions into the tubule lumen against their gradient. Now in the cytosol, we have water. And this water can dissociate into hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. Now the hydronium ions can basically be released into the tubule lumen through two ways. The first way we already talked about, and this is through the sodium hydrogen exchanger. The second way is going to be through a VATPase or proton pump. This proton pump pumps protons out into the tubule lumen by using the energy released by ATP hydrolysis. So what happens to the hydroxide? The hydroxide is going to combine with carbon dioxide to form bicarbonate. And this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. This bicarbonate can then be transported across the plasma membrane into the interstitial fluid through the action of the sodium bicarbonate co-transporter, which co-transports three bicarbonates and one sodium. So what happens to the proton when it's in the tubule lumen? Well, this proton combine with different bases inside the tubule lumen. And the base that we're gonna be looking at today is this base, hydrogen phosphate. So hydrogen phosphate accepts the proton, which forms dihydrogen phosphate and then this dihydrogen phosphate can move along the nephron and be excreted in the urine. So the next region that we're going to look at is going to be the medullary collecting ducts. So in the medullary collecting ducts we also have the sodium potassium pump and this sodium potassium pump moves three sodiums into the interstitial fluid and then two potassiums into the cytosol and it does so by using the energy released by ATP hydrolysis. Now inside the cytosol we have water and this water can dissociate into hydronium and hydroxide. The hydronium ions can go into the tubule lumen through the action of the proton pumps in the apical membrane. The proton pumps pump protons into the tubule lumen, and they do this by hydrolyzing ATP and using that energy to do this. The hydroxide ions can combine with carbon dioxide to form bicarbonate, and this bicarbonate is referred to as new bicarbonate. This new bicarbonate can then be transported into the interstitial fluid through different transporters. Now inside the tubule lumen, we once again have our hydrogen phosphate. The hydrogen phosphate can combine with protons to form the dihydrogen phosphate, which can be excreted through the urine. So that's it for this video. This video was short and I hoped it helped you get a little bit of an understanding of titratable acids and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.